Do not adjust your phone screen. You are witnessing the plane of the future. It's huge, can carry over 1,000 passengers, and it might be arriving at your local airport very soon. Or perhaps not. In this video, we'll be looking at a triple-decked aircraft. Why don't airlines fly them? What would they be like if they existed? And why we will never see them again? Let's jump into this never-built video. If you're new to the channel and checking it out for the first time, then subscribe if you like what you see for weekly aviation videos. Now, before we start today's video, I do have to stress that yes, there are technically triple-decked aircraft flying in the form of the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380 today. As in, they have three levels, two for passengers and one for cargo on the lower deck. What we're talking about is an aircraft with three levels for passengers throughout the plane and then in addition, a cargo deck on the bottom. Truly a gargantuan aircraft monstrosity. This aircraft design would be able to accommodate well over a thousand passengers in three different classes, with the very best in first class having their own private suites for long haul flights. Other features may include rentable bunks like a Japanese pod hotel, an onboard spa for passengers looking to relax, a business center to keep working whilst in flight, bars and dining establishments for airlines to earn additional revenue, and even gyms. Although, as we have said in our future aircraft cabin concept video, the idea of a gym on board is perhaps not the best idea without access to showers. And plus, would airlines really want to carry the extra weight of dumbbells on board? Of course, knowing airlines, they would more likely use these triple-decked aircraft in an all-economy configuration, cramming in as many passengers on board as possible to try and earn as much money as possible. Let me know down in the comments if you would fly on a high-capacity version of the plane. With regards of where this aircraft would fly, the plane would be exclusively long-haul, making sense only for flights across the world from Asia to Europe and to North America, between major hubs like Singapore, Dubai, London and New York. These planes would carry so many passengers that it would require a high-density, high-demand route. Lighter routes would make no financial sense and domestic short-haul routes even New York to LA would be impossible. So likely you're halfway through this video and you're starting to wonder, hey Nick, this is well, well and good and I'm enjoying the animations, but surely this concept doesn't actually exist. Well, during the research of this video, we did actually come across a few pretty insane triple decked concept aircraft. The first is the AWWA Sky Whale. Now this plane is totally bonkers and relies on technology that's beyond even the latest James Cameron film. I kind of hoped you'd say that. But we could admire the artist's vision for an aircraft that is truly of evolution beyond what we currently have today. The plane is a different take on what is known as the Brugent Range Equation, rather how to fly as efficiently as possible. They are propulsive efficiency, how efficient your engines are, aerodynamic efficiency, is how the lift is maximized and drag minimized, and structural efficiency, how much payload the plane can carry. Airlines naturally want the best engine and high aerodynamic efficiency, but they want to carry as much cargo, be it post or passengers, as possible. While the tube and two engines model has proven to be a great concept so far, has the airline industry become stuck in its ways and only relying on a design that is well over 60 years old? Second, we have the more conservative Deck 3 concept that can be built today with current technology. Seemingly a marriage between a Boeing 747, Airbus A380 and an Anatov AN-225 Myria. This design seems to be the jack of all trades, but the master of none. With three engines on each side, it requires so much fuel to fly that any airline CEO considering operating it would seriously need to check in for therapy. It would have three decks and would fly slower than normal commercial aircraft to reach a peak of fuel efficiency. 
The last concept on our list was one by Airbus considered back in 1996. Called the Airbus A2000, it could carry 600 to 1,000 passengers, in which economy class passengers would sit on the top deck of the three decked aircraft, business class passengers in the middle deck with three aisles, and first class passengers, whom beds would be available, in the lower deck. The Airbus A2000 was intended to have a range of around 8,000 miles or 13,000 kilometers. Ultimately, this project evolved into the Airbus A380 that we know and love today. But what about if we brought this triple deck concept to the current market using the aircraft that we have today, like the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380? After all, that cargo deck could just simply be repurposed for passengers like it has been done so in the past. The Lockheed Martin L-1011 had an option to turn its forward cargo deck into a boarding lounge with its own featured stairway. Passengers could board without a jet bridge from the tarmac, save the airline money, drop off their coats and have a cocktail before moving upstairs to their seats. Another example of the cargo area being used for passenger services is the Airbus A340. This plane not only had bathrooms on the lower level of the plane, but also a galley with room for several passengers. It even had safety equipment such as seats and masks for passengers who were in the space during an incident. Alas, for those hopefully to fly in a floating city, there are several factors that make bigger aircraft than the A380 very far-fetched indeed. The first is aircraft flexibility. As mentioned at the start of this video, these aircraft require substantial routes to operate on a profit, such as flying halfway across the world. Outside of these routes, they will not earn a dime for the airline despite costing well over half a billion to buy and even more to operate over its lifetime. Without guaranteed flexibility, like seen with smaller twin engine jets, airlines might not buy into this triple stacked pie. And passengers seem to prefer the twin engine flexibility, choosing between multiple flights in a day and leaving close to the time that they want to is more important than jumping on a single service once a day. Speaking of service, airports will have trouble getting access to the plane in order to stock it with food and fuel, with no ground cars able to reach that third level. Airports will also need bigger and longer runways to land the planes, impossible for airports like Heathrow and JFK, which already have space problems. Not including significant redesigns for taxiways, jet bridges and parking ramps as well. Lastly, being a passenger on board, you could expect a long boarding and disembarking times, a serious evacuation risk if you're involved in an accident, and don't even consider getting a meal whilst it's hot. Before we go, a special mention of the Boeing 314, which had three decks and was the mainstay for travel around the world for many years. But we'll do a video on this incredible aircraft and where it flew another time. So you'll just have to subscribe and tune in next time for that video. And if you're looking for a way that you can support the channel more, we also have now got a Patreon in the description that gives you access to videos early where available, live streams, discussions, and I'm also working on getting all of these custom models that you have seen here into flight simulator programs. So stay tuned for that. And this last comment may seriously date this video when it comes out, but thank you again so much for all the lovely subscribers that have allowed me to reach 20,000. Without you, none of this would be possible, and it has been an absolutely incredible journey. So from the bottom of my heart, and this is me going completely off the script right now, so I hope you're enjoying uh, Nick from Found and Explained completely ad-libbing. Uh, thank you so much for watching.